Yo, what's good YouTube? It's your boy Rahul back again with another Try Not To Laugh Challenge. And today, we got Chrissy D. Shout out to Chrissy Chaos Podcast, shout out TT Jerry, you know, shout out the whole family, shout out Pimp, Pimpy. Yeah, I, I fuck with Chrissy D. Um, and I feel like this one, this one's gonna be a little difficult. But let's not do too much talking and let's get straight into the video. Welcome to Joke World. This is Chris Stefano. Try not to laugh. Try not to laugh. You might shit yourself, but try. I don't eat flour. I don't eat a lot of sugar anymore. Not hardly any sugar. I, I'm a food addict, so I had to give up right. foods. You right. look great. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, she looks fantastic. Yeah, oh, my you. God. I lost yeah. a lot of weight. I mean, you know, I used to be a house. This is the kind of thing where people <laughs> now get you're a condo. About... <laughs> <laughs> now you're a townhouse. <laughs> you're a pool house now. <laughs> now I'm a cabana. <laughs> I'm a mansion oh my God. that is the funniest thing i've heard in a long time well it's tough because i you know i have a young stepson like a teenage stepson who's you know starting to talk to girls you know like whatever yeah, how do you navigate that and it's tough because you don't really know how to tell him like what's okay and what's not other than i'm like hey just you know be nice to girls look them in the eye you know like say hi like you know but it's like you don't know even even that i swear to god i said to my stepson i was like you know you talk to any girls like, yeah like a couple of girls and i was like oh good i was like do you talk to them and he was like yeah i said what do you open up with and he was like well you know like it's tough he's like because the one girl i like i swear he said he goes the one girl i like doesn't identify as a girl yeah. so she's a girl i know she's a girl but she doesn't like to be called that so i don't know what to say because i don't know like like how I'm supposed to talk to her. And I was Sup, like, freak. Well, I said, you know what, intro. buddy? I said, I, you're going to have to talk to your real father about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. um, your stepdad. Yeah. yeah. You can't live without putting a Q-tip in my ear. You put it in every day? If I don't have a Q-tip to put in my ear, I can't live. But how much wax are you building up each day that you have to Q-tip? It's not your... about the wax. I, What's the fact? Like I'm doing it every day. So there kind of is no wax buildup. It's like a, a mental. First of all, I love the feeling. My ear is itchy sometimes, so I love the feeling. And second. I've never related to Saul so much in this moment. I don't know why the feeling, it's just, it literally, literally scratches an itch. It's like you had an itch in there and you really want to scratch it and the only way you can do it is a Q-tip. Anyways. Second of all, I get the water out of my ears yeah. by doing it as because well. Because you know what? It's nice because we're, all, as men, we always two, penetrate. Two a day, it's yeah. nice to be penetrated once in a while. Yeah. You're not, you don't have to do a full gay sex. It rock. always depends on, it depends on the hole, but penetration in some holes that are not sexually in nature can be nice. A penetration in a non-sexual hole, all day. People ask me all the time, Chris, why do you pick your nose every day? I said, because I want to be penetrated, but I'm not gay. Mm -hmm. But I still do want to feel what it's like to be inside my hole, mm -hmm. and that's what I do that. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do with the q -tip. That's great. Pimp has something to say. Yes. Uh, Harvard Health says, do not clean your ears. They're self-cleaning. I know. I know what Harvard Health says. But well, listen. I, I can't tell Harvard it. Health that I didn't know my ears were a fucking yeah. Roomba. Yeah, that's... I was just going <laughs> to say it. I, is it Roomba? Was, when you were done talking, I was going to say it. Oh, we should have said it right at the same time. Tell, tell the truth. How's it doing? I want to look at the Speshy Weshy real quick. It was quick. on trending now, but I don't know if it is anymore. Chris DiStefano. The Speshy Weshy. Okay. First of all, out of the 64 votes on IMDb, 8 out of 10. Pretty fucking good. That's not bad. That, are you kidding 10. me? That's really good. Yeah. I think You're not going to really... get a 10 out of 10. Well, you could. No, that's impossible. Yeah. And here's the first, and let me see the first critic review. All right, here you go. Chris DiStefano's Speshy Weshy is unbelievable. I came 17 times. This guy is a mega babe. Wow, what a pipe on this Tardo. It's a little more than a half hour. It's engaging and funny. And boy, oh boy, do I like to come. His other special, 38 Waste, also made me come not as much as this. In fact, Stefano was set to release Speshy Weshy on YouTube. But since no one can come as much on YouTube as they do on Netflix, he decided this is the best place to feature it. Wow. My dad. <laughs> is, that, is that Tampa Tony? That's Tampa T. I don't understand. Girl. How do you get on morning television? <laughs> it's so... Chris, I was watching you on daytime television. You, Wendy Cummings, and two other women talk about female body image, and you are <laughs> curled up in a ball like no one look at me or ask me any questions. Yeah. I, so what happened was with that is I got booked. I think the very first one was, was when Whitney Cummings was filling in for uh, Wendy Williams. She asked me to come on her show and you know be a guest and then i i had like you know I, before the show the hair and makeup guy was like you know like this really like flamboyant
flamboyant gay guy. He was like, you're gonna have so much fun. You're gonna be great. It's gonna be good. And then like, you know, I'll be like, right here, I'll take your makeup off. We'll talk about your daughters. Like he was just like crazy. And we were having a good time. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and he was like whispering. He was so good, positive energy. And then I went out there and I just started <laughs> swinging for the fences with jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, the way people react to you, yeah. they just look at the ground. They don't even know what to yeah. do. <laughs> and the look on your face is like, am I going to get away with it? Yeah, it was <laughs> like, like a, a 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> this TV audience, so everybody else is doing like knock knock jokes and like Michelle Buteau is up there being like, yeah, like a politician, like girl power, mm -hmm, like that. Like everyone's clapping. And then I'm just out there doing jokes about how like I wish Travis Barker would die in a plane crash. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then they're like, and they're like, wait, what? And then, and, but it, they're jokes. And then just, and then I'm doing like Confederate, like Civil War jokes. And they're like, what is happening? <laughs> And, wi and I'm doing abortion jokes with Whitney Cummings, and they're all like bombing like so bad. But then I'm at it, and then and when I go off the set, that like guy who was like, yeah, everybody left. My green room was vacant. Nobody was there. Like, no, they didn't even give me a car home. They're like, you can get on the train. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and and I then after that. Me and Homeless Pimp, my guy, Mike Lavin, Homeless Pimp, who does all my production stuff, he was like, dude, because I was like, dude, I just bombed so hard on daytime TV. He was like, we have to get the footage. And we watched the footage, and we were on the floor, di like, dying, like, to the point where I almost burst my appendix from, because we were dying <laughs> laughing on how hard I was bombing. And I was like, you know what? Clip it. I was like, put all that stuff out. Because I remember that night, Michelle Buteau called me, and she was like, it's going to be OK, sweetie. Don't even worry about it. And I was like, lady, I'm not looking to be a daytime television <laughs> fucking host. I went with the intention of being a comic. So I went on. So I went on, and, and, and so I, I edited it, and I put it out there. And it got like a decent amount of traction. I was like, oh, Chrissy Daytimes, I'll come bomb on your show. And then I started going on all these daytime shows and just be like, I'm going to do the jokes as if this was late night. As if this was 2 o'clock in the morning at the Comedy Cellar, that's how I'm approaching this show. I don't know why you guys would have a man on this panel. This is the worst idea ever because I am going to say anything I say, the audience is going to hate me. If I was Travis Barker, Travis, where's my cat? If you're watching, and I know that you are, you should scan your body right now and make sure that there are no other tattoos of any other women on your body because it's not going to be cover up next time. She's going to start amputating body parts and you're going to come out to your next concert looking like a Civil War veteran. So you really need what? to be careful. No, this yes. is quite a minute. Ten years into comedy, yeah. I was like, my knees hurt from tap dancing. Take the tap shoes bag. I want to sit down, relax. Yeah. Yes. You call it stand-up comedy, I'm going to sit down and do comedy. I'm tired, y'all. Stop asking us to do stuff, okay? Also, comedy, like... His knees hurt, too, but... <laughs> oh, also, my God. God. I love that I'm bombing on this show. <laughs> I love it. You're not. I love that. Because I keep forgetting it's daytime TV, also, not like, on podcast. Yeah, T.T. Jerry's coming. I cleaned the pool this morning. The Tiger Shark 1400. What do you guys know about it? <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. Oh, about yeah. It. Then this is not garbage. This place is beautiful. This is it's unbelievable. It's okay. It, it is. It is. It is a beautiful place, but there's got to be something garbage in here. You. I mean, it's yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> this the fact that you bought a house not knowing anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't. Uh, okay. This has real like lottery winner vibes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> like you're not going to be, you're not going to be here in three years and someone's going to tragically die in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Can they know. repo a house? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, funny because I don't know. First of all, first of all, I I I get I, I've been getting scammed by everybody. Wow, I come in here, sure. they're like, oh, you need you need bee spray because there was a bee back there, two hundred dollars there. Yeah, you need then, a, you need a Johnson flange or something. All yeah. that stuff. I go to you know the pool. I put chlorine tablets in the pool. I'm like, we'll go with chlorine. We get the pool guy over. He goes, no, 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 the pH is off. So he puts chemicals in. The heater explodes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Man, they saw you coming across the Marizano. Yeah. And he was like, oh, and, and, he, and he's going to me. He's going, listen, the previous owner didn't have the right pH. He corroded the heater pipes and the valves and this and that. But long story short, it's two grand for a heater. Yeah. I can sell them directly to you. So yeah. we buy a fucking heater. Yeah, he's like, listen, I got one on a truck. Holy Just go shit. Go I got a heater on a hey, truck. Hey, man, why are you outside? pouring sugar in my pump? Don't worry <laughs> about it. Man. So I got lit up with the heater. He said the pool will be at 90 degrees the way my family likes it back in Puerto Rico. <laughs> It'll be warm nice water. Tide pool. I just stuck my, the heater's been on for, for 10 hours. Just stuck my finger in it. It's 73 degrees. Yeah, it's so, old. She's like, the pool's heated. I'm like, I don't know if it's running, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, what that reminds me of is freaking, oh my God. Anytime I go to an automotive store, anytime I go to an automotive store to get my car checked out, 
Bro, the amount of shit they hit me with is crazy. It's like I go for a standard oil change, right? I'm expecting to pay 40, 50 bucks at most. He starts telling me shit that like doesn't really need to be fixed. And he's just trying to tell me like, oh, I'll just take care of it. He's like, oh yeah, your air filter's all, all clogged up. I'll go and take care of that for you. You need these new pads just to, you know, Make sure that things are all right in there. Basically, it's all stuff that I don't necessarily need at this moment. And then they hit you with the tab and they're like, yeah, this is gonna be $4,000. I know your vehicle is only like $3,000 at this point, but like, yeah, if you want it fixed, just sign right here. Oh, and we, we'll take care of it for you too. Like they, the way they try and like get you to like already like agree to it, I'm just like, give me my oil change. And let me leave, bro. I just want an oil change. I don't need to get my kidney fucking taken out. Like, come on. <laughs> I love that, by the way, I knew something three years into it and then forgot it for 10 years <laughs> until I got on Joe Rogan. And then all of a sudden I fucking remembered all this gems <laughs> fucking when I'm flying home from his podcast. I'm like, oh, I had the story that could have changed my life and I didn't say it. <laughs> I and, had my machine. Yeah, yeah. Instead, I waited to do it on Hey Babe and Sal wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this is what I do now. Now I'm Chrissy Interman fasting, but then I think <laughs> I think the glasses and the watch is from the fasting. So I, well, you just—it's a full glow up. I, You're doing the body glow up too. Yeah, and Jazz, my girlfriend f hates it. She's like, "What the? You know what? Why the she hate it? Because she's like, you know, you, you glasses, the watch, the body. What the fuck are you doing? She doesn't I, like it. I was like, I'm trying to be healthy, babe. She wants to keep you fat. She wants to keep me fat. Wow. Yeah, she wants to keep me fat, and I told are her. You sure. On her, maybe not. Maybe she just doesn't want to put pressure on you. Yeah. She's well, worried if you're going crazy with all the watch and the glasses and the fat that you, you might snap. Well, she gets worried about me because I go, I go hard or go home. And she's like, <laughs> you, you, you go too fast with things. She goes, you go from zero to 100. And I just worry that you've lost all this weight in this good period, quick period of time. And I just worry that there's a, a you know, you go too hard and then something else happens. Because she reminded me, she's like, remember the last time you lost all this weight this quick? It was 2018. And I said, yeah. And she's like, and then remember all of 2019 you thought you were gay? <laughs> Hilarious, that almost, yo, that almost got me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's winning, by the way? You versus your sexuality. Uh, so far, right now it's right now it's me, but we are wavering. <laughs> where uh, it's one of those things where when I hit forty, if I'm lucky enough to hit forty, there might just be a thing where I'm like, listen, I got to be honest with you. The most fun I've had. I don't know if you, if you haven't seen the show, please Google it. Season one of White Lotus. The, uh, did you see White Lotus? I've seen episode one. Okay, so the first season of White Lotus, the the best character is this Australian gay guy. Yeah, and the, I'm like, the manager. That's the guy I want to be. That's that's the guy who's like, that. I love that guy. And it's like, what is that guy doing? He's just being gay. He's yeah. just having fun. Yep. You know, I'm like, and I, I found myself identifying with that guy. I was like, I don't know that I can eat a guy's ass over a table, which is one of the scenes. But I'm like, you know what, dude? I, can you... I it's crazy, because I started... I started White Lotus. I watched episode one. I'm, I'm kind of glad I never got there. I can be gay without hooking up with a guy. You've been hit, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you look like a like. What do people say you look like? Like you almost look like. You know how like some humans like you can just tell they're like bred from like Neanderthal. That's who you are. <laughs> like a pro magnum, just big fucking guy. Like, you're the guy who, in medieval times, you with an axe, I 100% would throw my wife and children in front of me and would say, kill them, because I'm so scared of you. I literally, I literally, you come at me with an axe, I'm on my knees, ready to suck everyone's cock. I'll, the chieftain, I'd be like, dude, fill up my stomach. I would not be able, to, dude, you're so big. How big is he? Can you stand up? I mean, are you tall too? Oh my God! Look 
at how big this guy is, dude. You're fucking terrified. He even put his toes away. His toes aren't like that. You're way too big. Dude, and with as tall, here's the thing. With as tall as you are and as big as you are, this is just the way God works. There's no way you have a high IQ. There's no fucking shot in hell. You're not going out. She's like 100% right. He is. Oh, is he smart? Wait, what school does he go to? UNM. UNM? Yeah, University of New Mexico. University of New Mexico, so not smart. Um, <laughs> just like I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, didn't, my, I was just kidding around. You know I'm just fucking around, dude. You know I'm just fucking, you're not on a steroid cycle right now, right? You got rage? You don't have any rage? Okay. How happy were you, right, when he, right? Because when you saw him, I mean, you were like, yes. Because you look, are you Native American? You have a Native American look, you know what I mean? You're part Native American. <laughs> many thanks, many thanks. I know, it's what it is. You're like Sacagawea and he's John Smith. It's what it is. Give me your fucking smallpox. <laughs> and how old are you, dude? You're like 22, just a young fucking kid, dude. Oh, I love it. You're like Wreck-It Ralph. I love it, dude. Do you also go to, so where, you met her in New Mexico? Yeah. Nice, dude. Why are you here? What are you guys doing here? Uh, my brother's getting married this week. Your brother's getting nice, dude. Are you going to eat one of the groomsmen <laughs> for protein? <laughs> Do you play sports? Uh, football, yeah. Magic, yeah. Of course. If you're that big and you're not doing anything, like if you over 6'3 and you can't dunk, what are you doing? If you're over 300 pounds and over six something, you're not a lineman, like, wasted potential, like. Do you play sports? Uh, football, yeah, magic, yeah, I play chess. <laughs> uh, dude, good for you, man, good. You gotta keep a beautiful couple, I love it, I love it. And diverse, right, Native American, white child, good. You guys are like a fucking community college brochure. I love it. What are you, 6'5", 6'6"? Six, 6'5", five, six, six? Six, five. Yeah. I know, dude. It's gonna be a lot of guys going home and what? Guess his weight? Six five, two forty. What is it? Two eighty five? Oh my god, dude. There are. I swear to God, thirty percent of the men in this room have a chubby. Just know that. There's thirty. Some of the guys. I see some of the guys like this. Six five, two eighty five. Dude, you're so gifted. I hope you have a little dick. What's his problem? God has to give you. So, you're fucking smart. You go to the University of New Mexico, one of our top universities, where they teach you all about Breaking Bad and meth. Well, smart. Got great hair. Six five, two eighty five. Beautiful girlfriend. What's his problem? What's his flaw? You have to know, you're his girlfriend. How long have you guys been going out? You're his girlfriend. You have to know. We're live here at the New York Comedy Center with Chris DiStefano, and he's roasting the fuck out of this guy. Sorry, I had to, I had to get my narwhal off. Flaw. You have to know, you're his girlfriend. How long have you guys been going out? Five years? What's his flaw? He's gotta have something. He's got a big dick then. Does he have a big dick? Pretty, wow, she just wants Why do I feel like that was Chris's indirect way to ask if he had a big dick? Like, he didn't want to go direct, but he just wanted to be like, he has to, he has, does he have one? How, how, how about? Pretty, wow, she just went like this. <laughs> good, I feel like one of, like, that, that's his dick. You know, like, <laughs> like it's out. He's like, yeah, dude, I put, I have to put a shirt on my dick because it's so big, so. Wow, and you're a good football player too. What position do you play? Uh, offensive tackle. Offensive tackle, so you're a good, is New Mexico, University of New Mexico Division One? Yeah. Oh wow, you might like go to the NFL and shit. <laughs> oh my God, dude, there's gotta be a flaw. What's this, what's your full name? Uh, <laughs> what's your, wait, what's your first name? Adam. Adam, and what's your last name? Gay. Adam Gay, <laughs> there's your flaw. It always works, Adam Gay. Thank you. Good fucking night, sir. Good night. Happy Pride Month to you. Adam Gay. Yo, that last set was so killer, man. 
if I would have been laughing my ass off if I was there in real life, like that shit was so funny. But yeah, man, we made it through another episode. There were a couple few close calls. If you're out there and you didn't laugh, just give yourself a hand, come on. If you guys know of a Try Not To Laugh challenge that you all want me to do, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. Um, go ahead and give this a like, subscribe, join the family. You know, we're trying to grow, we're trying to get out here. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.